I don't know. I hate that feeling of, oh, I'm the a-hole. Okay, so here we are again. Yes. Welcome to That Gets My Goat. I'm Rish Outfield. And I'm Big Anklovich. Do you want to go first, or should I? I had something to say, but I've forgotten what it was going to be. I was just talking about it ten minutes ago. Well, that feeds into my getting my goat, because I think I'm officially old. I, um, I would probably agree with that. Some, oh, wait, sorry. what? Uh, go on. Wait, <laughs> how dare you, sir? The summer is over. It just ended, or at least when we recorded this. It's probably <laughs> midwinter by the time this hits. But as like a celebration activity, I thought that I would take my niece to the local amusement park. Uh-huh. And so we went, and uh, I couldn't keep up with her. Every second or third ride, I'd have to sit down and <laughs> unsick myself because I would just – I would get sick on these rides. And I don't know why. I, I, I never used to. It, it was raining really, really hard in the morning. So almost nobody showed up to the park, which meant we could pretty much go on anything we wanted as many times as we wanted. And she was really proud of herself for going on this roller coaster. And as soon as it was done, she'd be like, let's go again. Can we go again? And I just tried to be tough and said, yeah, yeah, l let's go again. But a couple of times into it, I would have to say, well, I I'm going to have to sit down for a minute. Even on the roller coaster, man, to say nothing of the rides that spin or, you know, go up and down. And, uh, oh, shoot, this is a story I wanted to tell you. Uh -huh. And I never did because we haven't eaten lunch together in months. <laughs> I'll bet it was before I went to L.A. that we last Probably ate true. together. And that traditionally was our time when we would get together and tell each other the things that bugged us over the last week or, oh, this happened at work today or this happened with me doing absolutely nothing today or not even leaving the house and not changing out of my underwear. But now that we don't get together, we save that stuff for right now. For the, That gets my go pod Perfect. Podcast. We'll never eat lunch together again. Fun. Sad to hear about that, but okay. One of the times we were riding this roller coaster – there was a little blonde girl, and I'd say she was like six. And she was in the line ahead of us. And I guess she was with her brother and her brother's friend, or maybe her two brothers who were older, like 11 and 9 or something like that, 11 and 10. Maybe they, if it was a friend, the two 11-year-olds. And they got onto the roller coaster and said, ha ha, you can't come. And they rode away. And the girl was in the line at the front of the line and just like looking around, we're like, what? Because there were only two seats on the roller coaster, and they wouldn't let her ride with them. <laughs> so, as as the line moved ahead, I saw this girl asking people, "Can I ride with you?" And people were just like, eh, "Sorry, there's three of us." You know, it's like, "Well, of course, if there's three, that sorry." What I didn't explain was that the people that run the roller coaster wouldn't let her go by herself because she's a little kid. Uh -huh. And so she was forced to ask strangers if they <laughs> would let her go with them. And they wouldn't. And so finally, it was m uh, my niece and my turn. And I was like, yes, yes, you can come with us. And so the three of us went on this ride. But this little girl, I guess she was tall enough to go on the ride. Uh -huh. But I don't know how. But she wasn't <laughs> tall enough to go on the ride by herself. She right. had to go with a guardian. And so I pretended that, you know, I was her guardian as well as my nieces. And and then she flew out when you went over the loop and died. And it was your fault, huh? Did I tell you this story before? <laughs> Shoot. I thought I hadn't. No, no. But she was just really chatty and really friendly. And my niece said, so what happened with your mom and dad? And she's like, oh, my mom and dad are somewhere else on the park. And uh, my brother said he'd go on this with me. And then he, you know, he ditched me out. And I became so angry about that. <laughs> you got offended on her behalf. I huh? guess I did. But it was just. <laughs> she had no mouth speak for herself. Well, look, she was a little kid. There's a difference. Okay. <laughs> and she was forced to ask strangers to let her ride with them. And so, yeah, afterward, I said, so where's your brother going to be? And she's like, oh, I don't know. She, he probably went on it again or he went on the tidal wave or something. And, and I was just like, well, should I ask this girl if she wants to hang out with us? Because it's just yeah, weird. It's a little kid on her own. But uh, she said she knew where her mom and dad were and, and it was just a little ways over. And I said, oh, okay, we're going over that way. And I guess – she ran over and, and met with them. And, and hopefully the brother and his friend got in trouble for abandoning her. Right. Hopefully uh, they got their hides tanned. 
yeah, it just it was just weird because I, you know, I'm not a parent, but it, I can't see myself doing that to my sister to ditch her out like that. It just seemed like a mean spirited thing to do, and uh, and it got my goat. I hear you, but yeah, the whole reason I mentioned the amusement park was just oh, you know, my feet started to hurt, and uh, you know, I kept needing to rest, and the little girl had said that she had gone on that roller coaster eight times with her brother and his friend or her cousin or whatever it was. And so my niece said, we're going to beat that. (laughs) And she said we were going to go on it 12 times. And I couldn't do it. But we spent the whole day and we did go on it 10 times, which is a record. I mean, I've never done anything like that. Except for that one time at camp. But (laughs) it just... She wanted to go on it a dozen times, and it was all I could do to go on at 10. I, I love the roller coaster, and, and it, it was never not fun, but my body was telling me, no, you're, you're not a kid anymore. You can't keep doing it. Stop it. It was becoming too vomit-worthy of an experience. You know, one time I remember I was at Great America, and it was like the end of the day, and most people had already started leaving, and me and my family were still hanging around, and so there was a roller coaster... It's called the Tidal Wave, and it it wasn't like the greatest roller coaster of all. It was a fairly short one. It was basically like a half circle, but in the middle there was one loop that you would go through, and you'd get on it, and it would start you right away, straight into this loop. You'd flip over it, then you'd go backwards and go back through the whole thing backwards and then come down and stop. So it was a short ride, probably 30 seconds or something. At one time, this was the cool ride, but that... 15 years, I'm sure, had passed since that had happened. So this ride was basically deserted. And yeah, we were doing that where we'd get on the ride, you'd ride around it, and then we'd just get off, run around to the other end of the line, go straight back on. We were on the next car that would go because there was like eight people in line and there's 20 seats. And yeah, we did this like, I don't know how many times we went. We just kept going and going. And then we're like, oh, maybe we should try something else before it closes. Yeah, it's interesting what you can do as a kid i don't know if i could do that now i'm so fat i can barely fit in a roller coaster anymore i mean they have to use like the they click it on the the highest you know they push those things down over your shoulders and it goes click 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 click, and it locks in each time with one of those clicks for me it's just click and that's as far as it'll go you're also a giant (laughs) speaking of getting old okay i read an interview with sir sean connery this week and he's 80. And uh, gets my goat. Uh, does. 80 years young. Money penny. And uh, gosh, Sean Connery's still the coolest guy. And so I just wondered, he's 80. You're in your 30s. Could you beat Sean Connery in a fight? <laughs> I couldn't beat very many people in a fight. I'm not a much of a fighter. I've been in one actual fist fight in my life, and it was a one-punch affair. And I'll have to... Confess to the fact that I wasn't the one that threw that one punch. Oh, wow. So now, Somebody donate and he'll tell the rest of the story. Well, I, I, the interview was really interesting because he was talking about being retired from acting. And he's like, and I'm not doing it anymore. So fuck you. And I was just like, whoa, what the hell? And uh, they asked him, well, of all the movies that you've done, what was your favorite film that you did? And it surprised the hell out of me. He said... Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Oh, I thought you were going to say Darby O'Gill and the Little People. (laughs) My pretty Irish girl. And I just thought, well, dude, if that was the favorite movie you did, why the fudge didn't you come back for Indiana Jones 4? I mean, he was was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm retired. I'm sure it'll be a much crappier film than the others. And it was. But, oh, dude, and now, did you even see Indy 4? Yeah, I saw it. Whether you liked it or hated it, wouldn't that have been a better movie with Connery instead of John Hurt? <laughs> John Hurt played the oh. eccentric old scientist oh, okay. that was uh, Marion Redwood's mentor or Indy's, something like that. And I think in the original version of the script, was that was Henry Jones, yeah. Yeah, that would have been much better, definitely. Just because it would have been someone that was back from an earlier film instead of, you know, introducing somebody else. I don't know. I, there were a lot of missteps on that Indy 4, but there's talk they are going to do a fifth one. Oh, yeah? And I must be the only person on Earth that's fine with that. 
<laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, do another one. I, what, I, I still love Indiana still... Jones. I still love Steven Spielberg. Not so thrilled about the other guy right now, but by all means, learn from your mistakes and make a better fifth one. But everybody else is just like, no, you never should have made a fourth one. <laughs> Conceivable that you'd make a fifth. Harrison Ford's not even going to be in Indiana Jones 5. You know, it's just Shia LaBeouf. Are you still fine with it? Oh, okay. I didn't read that fine print. <laughs> Let's not do that film. <laughs> Tell me what gets your goat. What got coach. my goat? My goat was gotten. You know, this, this week we were having trouble with my phone. See, we've got one of those VoIP phones, which I believe stands One the for, bloody hellish VoIP. <laughs> I believe it stands for voice over the internet phone. V-O-I-P. VoIP. Okay, but you basically, haven't helped me. Uh, what is voice over the internet? Basically, what it means is your phone, instead of going through your traditional phone line... It's sent over the internet. You still use your phone like a phone, but the but it's an internet it's signal going rather than a through your signal. internet. Okay. So if your internet is down, then your phone will be down as well. So it's kind of like Skype, but you don't have to actually use your computer for it. It's just on the phone. So we have one of those because you know it was just a good deal. We got it kind of bundled in, as they like to say these days. Why, why did you grab your genitals when you said bundled in? <laughs> I they had it bundled in with uh, our internet service in general. So we just went for it, you know. But this week, you'd get on the phone and you'd try and talk to somebody. And it was just like, <laughs> and you're just like, what? I'm sorry. I didn't yes, Greedo. I was just on my way to pay your boss. <laughs> and it was so awful. You couldn't understand anything. And it got to the point where I'd be like, I'll just pull out my cell phone and use my cell phone right here at home instead of the phone that's here and free and doesn't cost me anything to use because I can't understand anything on it. So finally, I'm like, I got to call these guys. So I called them up. On your cell? Yes, on my cell because I wouldn't have been able to understand them otherwise. And I'm just like, hey, you know, I don't know what's going on with my internet speed. I actually searched on the internet and found a internet speed checking kind of a thing because I'd heard rumors going around that there was such a application. So I found it Checked my internet speed, and I was getting like 200k of internet uh, speed, KPBS or whatever the heck it is. That's um, KPBS here with <laughs> Wolfman Jack. And my internet is supposed to go up to, and it's DSL or something like that, I don't know, even really know, but it's supposed to be up to approximately 7 megs a second. And I'm getting 200k. It's going so slow that the internet can't even download the friggin' voice of people to go over my phone. So I call them up and I'm like, hey, what is the deal? And I don't know what they did over at the internet place, but he's just like, oh, uh, let me see. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. How about that? Is that better? And it was basically fixed like that. What is it that they've got down there? Did they just have like a light switch? And on the bottom it's like, hellaciously slow and then he flips it up and it's like normal at the top and they just switch that down on me so he's like oh yeah now it should be better wait like 15 minutes and uh test your speed again and you'll see that it'll be it'll be a lot better so i waited a little bit tested it. it's up to like 1.5 megs or something like that which is still a long ways from seven and I think when they say up to seven means you're probably never going to get higher than five. But still, I'm at one and a half. And so that went on. Next day, I checked it again, and it was back down to like 0.5. I'm just like, dude, what is the deal? And so I call them back, and they're like, oh, somebody flipped the switch again during the night. <laughs> I was just, we have gremlins. So they tell me that basically what is going on is that... We're only allowed to download up to a certain amount of data and then because we're taxing the system beyond what's normal or something like that, they'll lower our speed down. To punish you? I, I think it's just because we've done more than our share, so they need to br let other people still have their full speed. They lower us down to a lower speed. Now, I don't know if that's kosher or not. I don't know if that's crap. They're just screwing us over. I get the feeling that if I called up and said, F you, I'm going to quit on your crappy service if you don't cut this crap out, I bet they would probably, oh, yeah, sure, we'll stop that right now. But because I'm generally courteous and 
not one of those a-holes that shouts and stamps their feet to get their way. They continue to screw me over. Do you ever wish that you were one of those a-holes? <laughs> like today I had one of those pushy telemarketer types. or I, I don't know if they're telemarketers, but it's just like, yes, when c- could we sit down with you and talk to you about your life insurance options? And I was like, oh, geez, I, I never probably I, – I don't really – I right now is not a good time. And he's like, how about tomorrow then? And I was just like, well, you didn't listen to me at all, you pushy piece of crap. And I was like, tomorrow at, what, 3 o'clock? I'm just like, no. I, I, and I've, I wasn't upset like that. I wish I had been. I wish I'd be like, never. I, I will see you in hell. But we I can talk about my life insurance in hell together. In fact, I probably overwhelmed this person with apologies. You know, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but no, I, I don't have any money right now. And, and I, I apologize for not having any money. Here. You know, just like that kind of crap. It's like, no, you called me. Oh, I wish I were that guy. That's like, what's your name? Describe yourself naked or hang up. <laughs> just one of those cool dudes that was puts up with no crap. And he's like, uh-huh. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you about my day. And you know, if you hang up, I will hunt you down. For the next three minutes, I'm going to talk and you're going to listen. And you just start reading from the newspaper or something. And I know of people like that. Yeah, you know? I, know, I know a guy who actually makes CDs of this. When telemarketers will call, he will push record on his answering machine and he will be the most annoying person he possibly can be to this telemarketer. And he tries his best to keep them on. Like one time he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just feeling really sick right now. Uh, And they're like, oh, I'm sorry, can we call back? No, 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 it's okay. Go ahead and tell me what what you got. And then he like gets a can and fills it up with like soup or something. And then he goes to the toilet and he's like, (laughs) yeah, no, go ahead. And he pours it into the (laughs) toilet while he's talking. They're like, oh, I'm sorry, sir. We can call back. He's like, no, 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 it's fine. Keep going. And then he's and he does it again. And, you know, so (laughs) there's people that they definitely are. the. You know, my wife works in retail at a large store. And very often she has to do the returns section there. Where she works, they don't have a really friendly return policy. You know, in America, we've just been conditioned to believe that the store should take anything back. We come back with a freaking box that's just covered in crap. It's been smeared all over, and we expect them to take it back with the flies on it and everything. But this store is actually not an American store to begin with, so they have a a little less of the customer is always right kind of a policy. And so people will come back and they'll find out, you mean I can't return this because I opened it and slept on the pillow already and blew my nose in it or whatever. I don't know what it is. You know, these people are always trying to pull something on it. Somebody brings back something that had flown off the top of their car and been run over by several cars and you can see the tire marks on it. And they're like, yeah, I opened this up and it was broken. So I need to return it. And she has to say no. And these people, pretty much once a day, she'll come home with some story of the a-hole that, I want to talk to your manager, kind of a person. And so it makes me even more reluctant to ever be that a-hole guy. And it's unfortunate because, yeah, I'll continue to be screwed. They'll flip that switch back down to unbearably slow because I watched something on Netflix. And oh, how dare you? Yeah, seriously. That's what. That's the way it is. That's just like, not what the internet is for, yeah. sir. Oh. You're like, screw you. You were supposed to just look at one page a day, and then that's all. So I guess that's the way it'll be. I don't know. I actually made a little uh, text file, and I've been going in each day and testing my speed and uh, writing down what it's at just so that I can call them up and say, you know what, you said that you bumped me up to this different level so that it wouldn't go slow on me all the time, and it hasn't changed any. Look at it. This is what it was this day, this day, this day, and I could just go through and say, F you. My buddy Brian is on those Quest commercials all yeah, the time. That's right. And so he's going to hook me up. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't he your buddy? I did a few things with... Uh, Okay. With Brian in college. There well, was that one time at camp too, but uh, we, we did a few things about there that too. much. You know, I don't know that we've ever discussed putting like an explicit warning on this podcast. Do we need to do that? Is there a 
I mean, surely FCC has no bearing or MPAA and the ratings and all that stuff. But you know how on Escape Pod, every once in a while you'll hear the host say, today's episode is rated R for butt f***ery. And then you'd be like, whoa, what the? Really? Thank you. I will listen to this one first. I, 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 oh, and we discussed that on our very, very first episode that we would never say, well, this one's yeah. a seven on a, a scale of offensiveness. Yeah, we decided to leave that up to parents. If parents wanted to let their children listen to it, then they could listen to it first and decide if it was A-OK to pass along. And I think most parents have listened to it and said, nah. Which I am fine with. I'm fine and a half. I'm thrilled. I'm the Trix Rabbit actually getting the gosh darn cereal happy wow. about that. That happened once and then it turned out to be only a dream. Oh, those bastards. <laughs> that gets my goat. Oh, the silly rabbit. That commercial has to have been 40 years. They've been cock blocking that poor rabbit. <laughs> With the General Mills is rotting in some kind of military cemetery. Um, what were we talking about? The internet, obviously. Oh, okay. So your thought on this podcast? It's okay, right? But well, I've, I've used a lot of profanity on this because the whole point of the podcast of gets my goat is to vent, uh -huh. is to get some of that anger out of the way and. Oh, another thing that irritates the crap out of me is whenever a salesman or a telemarketer or one of those automated machine automated things machine calls, spies. after I hang up or so politely tell them no thank you six times and then hang up, they will call again. And I know that it's like the computer uh -huh. doing it by accident, but every time I will pick it up. There's nobody there. So the machine redialed it or something like that for some reason. But I always feel so stupid the second time when I pick up and I'm like, hello. I, you know, I'm already irritated that they would dare call back. And then there's nobody there. And I was like, suddenly I'm the a-hole, not them. Yeah, they're actually there. They're just listening to you going. He said hello. That stupid guy picked up the phone again. It's got the same caller ID on it and everything. He picked it up. What an idiot. Caller ID, you have that on your phone. Everybody has it on their phones now, I right? Think it's pretty standard. <laughs> Got it on my VoIP phone. Too bad I can't understand what people say, but... Tell Jabba that I've got his money. <laughs> Are there certain times that you won't answer the phone, but depending on what the caller ID says? I pretty much only answer calls that I recognize the number, and otherwise I'll just let the phone ring. Really? Yeah. But you can't know all of your wife's love I friends. don't, and I'll let those lovers just go ahead and dial into the voicemail and leave a message. Some kind of a smutty, steamy message. <laughs> but what if it's a neighbor or a friend of one of your kids? Then they leave a message, and I listen to the message, and if it's somebody, then I'll call them back. Wow, that's a pretty cool attitude, I guess. I Usually I just... Let my wife get the message because they're all calling for her anyways. Nobody wants to talk to me. Are you kidding? I've got like one friend and half of an acquaintance. That reminds me um, some another thing that got my goat. A couple weeks ago, I was given sort of a job offer, but not really. It was uh, an offer of how about you do some work for us and just just do some work for us. You know, it would be nice if you did. Wouldn't it be nice to do some work for us kind of thing? <laughs> and I was just like, oh, no, I'm too nice to say go lick yourself. But oh, I was just so upset. And so I was telling my friend – not upset, but I was upset with myself because I'm so weak-willed. I'm, I'm so polite that it's just – irritating you know with strangers or right. you know, with people that take advantage rude and that as hell to me but polite to strangers yeah isn't that strange <laughs> anyway i was telling this to my friend jeff and he made some comment that really bothered me about my personality and he said that you are so needy and you need people to like you and you need people to respect you and, and he says you know anytime i'm at work and i'm on instant message i get a message from you it's like hey man what's going on dude that pissed me off so bad i was just like i am your only friend in the whole world <laughs> and you think it's needy that i i am you and say what's going on and so i purposely didn't i am him for the last two weeks and he'd get on there and he'd be like hey what's going on 
I'm just like same as you. I feel like I'm 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 Blue Costello, but it's just he's right. I do need people to like me, and I, I hate being. You want them to want you? Yes. You need them to need you? Yes. You'd love them to love you? Yes. I'm I'm begging you them to, to beg, beg you. me, basically. Okay. I'm starting to understand this then. Yeah, I know this about myself, but to have my friend say it and apply it to. Our relationship just bugged me so bad. <laughs> but I, I am one of those people that uh, dwells on the negative and always assumes the worst. And I wish I weren't. I wish I would just one of those guys that you throw anything you want at me and it's not going to bother me. And I'm, you know, nine telemarketers in a row call and I'm just like, yes, yippee. Let me tell this guy where to stick it. And I'm not like that. I've been screwed over a few times just because of that tendency. I have eagerness to please. And yet I have such a caustic personality that nobody wants me around. It's just, I'm the go-to guy. If if we want to screw somebody over and then never talk to them again. (laughs) Sorry, why why are we still talking? I don't know. This, this is a long goat. It is. <laughs> Pretty soon this is going to take over the whole regular podcast. We're gonna, not going to have time to do that because we're busy doing goat episodes. Okay, well, well, we will stop then. And yeah, if, if you don't want to continue doing it or if, or if you're just like, oh, geez, do we have to talk for 22 minutes or whatever it is, uh, let me know. And uh, I'm, this is the royal you uh, if you're a listener and you're like, oh, jeez. Remember how many complaints we used to have about how long our shows were? Like, my commute is 32 minutes, so anything over 27 is too long. Like, oh, okay, I, I apologize. I didn't know math would be required. <laughs> no? All right. We're going to cut it off here. Lorena Bobbitt style. Yeah. I've been Rich Outfield. And I'm Big Anklevich. Thanks for listening. Good night. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. That'll teach you.